what's going on guys, Bob Roach from RoachTechnology.com here with yet another quick Hackintosh tip for you. Now if you've been paying attention to the Hackintosh community or your software update, you'll know that OS 10 10.8.2 has been released to the public. And if you've been paying attention to me on Twitter or once again the community, you'll know that it's giving a lot of people a lot of issues. And now depending on your hardware configuration, this video may or may not help you. I'm running some older hardware, I have a first generation Core i7 system, I'm not running a Sandy Bridge or an Ivy Bridge, so take this video with a grain of salt because what works for me may not work for you. I would love to do tutorials on every single hardware configuration out there, but I don't have the time or the cash for that. So now with that said, just because of the nature of this update and how many problems it has been giving everybody, make sure that you have a backup partition. Not only is something that backs up your current drive, you know, data like Time Machine or, you know, something like that, but also have another partition that you can actually boot into that runs OS X. So as you can see over here, I have, this is my main drive, but I also have a Mountain Lion backup. I have a partition running Lion. So if my main system does go down, I can still boot into these and I can get any data I need. So you'll definitely want to make sure that you do that. Also, these can also help if you don't want to install the update right to your main drive. So if something does go wrong, you're not out of luck. So if you want to just do a backup partition, of 10.8.1 and then try to install it over that that's a good way to test so that if something does go down then it's as simple as you know just reinstalling or recloning your current partition so with all that out of the way I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use the App Store because I have tried both with this App Store Delta update as well as the combo update and neither one has worked out of the box for my system so with that said I'm just gonna go ahead and run this update here Gonna, of course we're going to agree and now mine has already been downloaded and it wants me to restart it's about a 350 megabyte download if I remember correctly so let's go ahead and update this and we'll see what happens alright so here we are at the restart screen and also another thing I forgot to mention that you'll want is a UniBeast flash drive or just something that has you know, a bootloader on it just something that if something does go wrong you can boot into just in case for whatever reason your bootloader that's installed to the hard drive doesn't work also another suggestion get some Hackintosh juice because this could be a wild ride so let's go ahead and just restart so now upon restarting it's just gonna close everything and then it will start to actually install the update which you can see right here right now so this probably will not take very long and so when it's done I'm just gonna go ahead and jump to the computer rebooting so the computer is now restarting and should be you know at that black screen momentarily so depending on your system, you know, if you have like an Ivy Bridge processor or some newer hardware, you can just try to reboot, boot into it normally, and you know, who knows, maybe it'll actually just work for you out of the box. But me personally, I know for a fact that it's not going to work, so I'm just going to boot right into that backup partition I mentioned. So here's Chimera, aka Chimera for my longtime viewers, and now I'm, I'm going to boot into Lion. It could be Mountain Lion, it could be Lion, it really doesn't matter, as long as it can access your main partition. So as you can see, Mountain Lion has booted up, and I want to take this time to say this right here is 10.8.2. What I did here is I created a UniBeast drive out of the actual update that I downloaded from the Mac App Store, the full-on like 4 gigabyte download. I, made, I went ahead and I made a UniBeast drive out of that and did a fresh installation, and as you can see, 10.8.2 installed great. There was no problems with it. It worked just like 10.8.0 did. So I'm really not sure, it must just be a problem with the upgrade, because like I said, doing a fresh installation with, from 10.8.2 seemed to work just fine. So if you really don't want to upgrade, you'd rather just not have to go through this hassle and you want to just do a clean installation, then this actually might be a pretty good way to go for you. If you just you know, want to get it up and running, don't have to worry about deleting texts and modifying files. Simply doing a fresh installation, at least for me, cured the issue completely. But in this video, we're on the journey to go ahead and try to upgrade. Alright, so here we are back at the desktop, and I have two or possibly three different fixes for this, so I'm just going to go ahead and do one at a time, just because I don't want to go ahead and fix what isn't broken, so just doing one thing at a time will kind of narrow that down. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up a finder window, and now we go to the main drive that you know we're trying to fix here, you want to go to System, Library, Extensions, and you're going to find a text called Apple ACPI Platform Text. Now what we're going to do is delete it. So, you know, as most of you guys know, my password is extremely secure. So we're going to go ahead and send that to the trash. We're going to empty the trash. Go ahead and come down here, empty trash. And now there's a link in the description to a different Apple ACPI platform .kext. So we're going to copy that right back to where this one is. And now what we want to do is open up Disk Utility. So that'll open right up. And now we want to go ahead and repair the permissions. So let's go ahead and repair the disk permissions right there. This will take a second. As you can see, it found whole worlds of things wrong, so that's good. And actually, you can actually see this one right here. It actually pointed out Apple ACPI platform and it repaired it, so those permissions have been repaired. And now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and restart the machine. Now here we are rebooting. Now this may work for you. Just doing that little patch alone may work for you depending on your hardware. But for me, I'm not quite sure yet, so let's go ahead and find out. 
And as you can see for me, that obviously did not work. So let's go ahead and try again. Now, since that didn't work, what I'm going to try to do next is just go ahead and reapply some multi-beast settings. So I'm going to open up the latest version of multi-beast. Go ahead and click through, continue, continue. Now it's going to want to install on Lion. So what I'm going to do is just randomly select one, continue, but I'm going to change my location. And we're going to make that Macintosh SSD, or in your case, whatever drive you need to you know, install these things to. So I'm going to click continue. And as you can see right here, I do have my DSDT file on the desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, user DSDT option here. And drivers and bootloaders. Go ahead and go to drivers. I'm not even really going to worry about audio yet. I just want to get it booting. So right now I'm just going to go ahead and go to we'll do miscellaneous. I'm going to try to reinstall these. We'll do fake SMC as well as my plugins. And now once again, this is totally dependent on your hardware. You may not even need to do this. Maybe that last patch actually did just you know do the trick for you. So with those selected, it's going to install on Macintosh SSD. I'm going to enter my extremely secure password once more. Go ahead and let it install some stuff. And now that it was successful, I'm going to go ahead and reboot one more time. So as you can see, we're now rebooting after we ran that multi-beast and you know, entered some settings. Personally, I did you know the DSDT install. If you're on a Z77 motherboard, you really don't need a DSDT. But I would go ahead and reinstall fake SMC because it seems to me that that's the issue. Maybe the fake SMC in combination with the Apple ACPI platform. But regardless, we'll go ahead and see if that worked. So I'm not going to do any boot flags, any kernel flags or anything. No dash X, no dash V. Just straight up out of Chimera, we're going to hit enter and we'll see if it boots. Look at that. Up and running on 10.8.2 from the update. Go ahead and come up to about this Mac here. Go ahead and zoom in on this for you guys. So right there, not too far. 10.8.2, 3.2 gigahertz. Everything is fully recognized. Actually, I shouldn't say that yet. Okay, now everything is fully recognized because you can see we have graphics enabler and everything like that. Now, right now, I probably do not have audio, which is to be expected, and that's a very easy fix. But there you guys go. Depending on your hardware, you may need to do all that, or you may need to do none of that. The other fix I was going to recommend is going into the fake smc.kext, right-clicking it, showing the package contents, and deleting the OEM SMBIOS.kext within that. After deleting that, I've also heard that helped many people out. But there you guys go, that's a successful upgrade from 10.8.1 to 10.8.2. What I recommend when doing this, like I said earlier in the video, is having that separate drive that you can boot into and freely change things like that. Because that is definitely what saved us for the 10.8.2, having that second partition that we could actually run all these things from, such as multi-beast and deleting kex. But it's now safe to say, a couple days later, I apologize for the delay, real life kind of got in the way of my Hackintosh life. But uh, regardless, 10.8.2, I would, I would finally now give that big thumbs up and I attribute my success to the good old Hackintosh juice. So go ahead and like the video because the Hackintosh juice is what made this possible. So thank you guys very much for watching. I hope this helps you out. I'm at CPUKid on Twitter. Be sure to let me know your experience. Also be sure to check out RoachTechnology.com and at RoachTechnology on Twitter. And I hope to see you guys back here very soon.